Hey folks, you know, I was planning on going out today, but I can't find my keys. Don't you hate it when that happens, when you're, you know, searching everywhere and you just can't find your keys to your car or your house or your yacht or whatever other stuff you decide to have keys for. <clears throat> Anyways, don't you just hate it when you cannot find your keys? I do. So, anyways, because I can't find my keys, I figured I'd, you know, do another Q&A for you all. So, once again, thank you all for joining me. This is That Montana Guy, bringing you another video. And, uh, today we are going to talk about John Coulter. Okay? Mr. John Coulter. Do any of you know who he is? Well... John Coulter was a man that often tried to get out of Montana, but just couldn't. Many who come to the state or call it home already have similar problems. We do? I, I don't think I do. Well, maybe a little bit. Hmm, I'll have to think about that one. But not in the way that Coulter did. Oh, okay, well, I guess uh, Coulter had some problems, but uh, anyways... Coulter was born in Virginia in 1774, but his family moved to Kentucky around 1780. The backwoods... Uh, where was I? I completely forgot what I was going to say. Oh, the backwoods became a second home to Coulter, and he gained a wide variety of wilderness skills. These skills were what got him noticed by Mary Weather Lewis in 1803, and he was given a spot in the Lewis and Clark expedition for five dollars a month. Five dollars a month. I dare you to live off of five dollars a month these days. <clears throat> Any challenge acceptance? Do you accept this challenge? No. Yeah. I didn't think so. But anyways, uh, Coulter's knowledge and expertise in everything outdoors proved invaluable to the expedition's success. But he got a rocky start. Uh-oh. What'd you do, Coulter? After an argument at the party's forward staging ground in Pittsburgh, Coulter threatened to shoot John Ordway, a sergeant in the expedition. Wow, he had some balls. <clears throat> oh, can I say that on, uh, on this? Oh, sorry. My bad. He had some uh, big cojones. Anyways, Coulter nearly lost his place before the journey even started, but after he apologized and promised to do no wrong, he was given, or I'm sorry, he was not given, he was forgiven, forgiven, and it was a good thing too, because Coulter's hunting skills were unmatched on the expedition, and he was instrumental in finding Indians, or Native Americans if you want to be politically correct, which I am not on my channel, I do apologize if it offends anybody, I will say Indians, Native Americans, regardless, I don't care, to show the way. On the return trip in 1806, the party once again stopped at the Man Mandane villages in North Dakota. They were met by two fur trappers heading up the Missouri, and Coulter convinced Lewis and Clark to let him lead them upriver. It was agreed, and Coulter left the group two months early with an honorable discharge. An honorable discharge. The man who threatened to shoot a sergeant. Yikes. But he got an honorable discharge. Good for him. So, Coulter took the men as far as Three Forks, where the Gallatin, Jefferson, and Madison Rivers all meet. And 10 points to whoever can answer this question. Gallatin, Jefferson, and Madison Rivers all meet to make what river? <whistles> you, you, seriously? Crickets? No, no one knows? <sighs> Must I teach you everything? It's the Missouri. The Missouri River. Ah, oh, man. I'm going to have to grab that bag of potatoes here pretty soon. Just kidding. Okay. And stayed with them for two months before once again deciding to head out of Montana. This guy is kind of like going in the vortex or the twilight zone. He keeps going back and forth, back and forth. I'm starting to understand here now. He made it as far as the Plate River, about a week from St. Louis, before running into this individual. I will not name him because that is the question for you. Who is that person? And his party of men heading upriver to the Rocky Mountains in search of furs. 
Coulter's desire to leave left him when he. Uh, Col Coulter's desire to leave left him when he saw several of his former colleagues from the Lewis and Clark expedition, including. Uh, or I'm sorry, Lewis and Clark expedition. He helped construct Fort Raynard, or Fort Raymond. Wow, I must be tired tonight. I need some coffee. When the group reached the Yellowstone and Bighorn Rivers, and even set out to open up relations with the nearby Crow Indians. So, my question is for you on this episode of Q&A. Is, who is the individual that John Coulter led back, or the individual and his party of men that he led back up to the Rocky Mountains in search of furs? Is it option A? Perry Chateau. Sounds French. Option B, George Drollard. Option C, William Morrison. Or D, Manuel Lisa. No, it's not the Mona Lisa. It's Manuel Lisa. Kind of sounds Spanish in a way. Alright, so with that question of done... Now I'll give you the answer of last week's question, which was, who was the individual who made that famous speech, I am tired of fighting, our chiefs are killed, looking glass is dead, the old men are all dead, it is cold and we have no blankets, the little children are freezing to death, I want to have time to look for my children and see how many of them I can find, maybe I shall find them among the dead, hear me my chiefs, I am tired, my heart is sick and sad. From where the sun now stands, I will fight no more forever. So, who is a famous person? And he, I, I have to admit, before I give you the answer, he was an extraordinary man. The answer? Chief Joseph, of course. Oh, hey. I found my keys. Rock on. Now I can, uh, you know, stop, drumping, or stop dropping some knowledge up on here and head on out. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. Y'all take care. Have a safe day. And uh, have fun in the woods. That Montana guy. Bye-bye. By the way, I forgot to mention that the answer into that, or this week's question is from Tribes and Trappers from Greg Strandberg. Oops, can't even see it. Sorry. Trappers and... Wow, I can't read. I'm sorry. Tribes and Trappers by Greg Strandberg. Okay, another beautiful book that I own. Um, I am not advertising these books, even though it may seem like I am. Um, these are just books that I have collected over um, over the years, and uh, I read them. So these are some of the books I collect my answers from. So if you're a bookworm <coughs> like I am, I'm sorry, but anyways, a bookworm like I am and you love Montana history like I do. Good book. But anyways, like I said, I found my keys. Jingling, jingling. Time to get out of here. Later.